countries, uh, Spain, Italy, France, have all got burgeoning uh, networks. And, you know, we're somewhat left behind in this. But to counter that, we do have a very good existing rail network. And that was one of the problems with this scheme was, did we really need it at the beginning when we have such good existing services? And that might well have been a mistake to have started it. But once you start something like this, you shouldn't give up halfway because it looks bad uh, reputationally for the nation. It looks bad to the people who were promised this scheme. Um, and it just wastes vast amounts of money. Uh, the railway business is, of course, international. Um, you've written books about it. Um, what will the world's investors and the world's contractors and project managers make of this when they, they read it? Well, I suspect that, uh, you know, one of the damaging aspects of this is that uh, if contractors are going to come and uh, bid for projects in the UK, they might well up the price that they're bidding because they'll think, well, there's a risk that, you know, we've got the sort of government that pulls out of stuff halfway through, um, and that obviously is, is a, a, a big negative. So, uh, you know, I don't think that uh, this is doing our national reputation any good at all, both among the business community and amongst people's perceptions of, you know, Britain as being uh, a forward-looking, modern, uh, efficient country. I think it is deeply damaging that, you know, we've embarked on a massive project and not managed to complete it. Now, it's a tale of two cities and a race between capitals. London is on the verge of reclaiming its crown as Europe's biggest stock market, less than a year after being overtaken by Paris. The combined market capitalisation of primary UK listings is currently around $2.9 trillion, just behind France's $2.93 trillion. Just six months ago, that gap between the two was around $250 billion. Since then, the difference has shrunk to just $30 billion. The French market benefits from trading in luxury firms such as LVMH, L'Oreal and Hermes, while London is weighted more towards stocks in major oil and gas companies like Shell and BP. Well, Justin Urquhart Stewart is an investment manager and business commentator and joins us in the studio. Lovely to see you again, Thank Justin. You. Thank you. So how have we got to the point that, that London might be overtaking Paris again? Well, as you mentioned, those particular stocks in terms of things like mining company, oil companies, they're suddenly back in vogue. The price of commodities have gone up, as we all know, because we can see what's happened to inflation. Um, but London was always much more international market. In fact, you said the London market really isn't a British market at all. Um, around about, in terms of value, 50% is probably over. Um, and so you had a lot of overseas companies listing on, uh, on London. And so France was always very keen to try and drag, it, drag it more business to them. But Britain had one advantage. It's called English. <laughs> um, can I just ask you, I mean, in terms of uh, why this is relevant, I mean, why does it matter? Is it simply a question of the British being able to say, well, the French being able to say, I've got a bigger market than you? Maybe some of that, I suspect. But more to the point, actually, it really is about attracting new business. Because if you can get a company to float on your market, it's giving a profile to the, to the market itself. And with that, of course, quite often then goes, where's the head office, where the decisions are being made, and is there any more likely that that investment is being carried out locally in the United Kingdom? Um, and so, yes, it's important the stock exchange is seen to be successful it attracts other businesses and of course with that goes the legal work the accounting work everything related to it and that's where London's got an advantage it has that background range of services and of course internationally and in the right time zone halfway between China and America so London has these uh, oil and gas companies for example uh, partly why it's doing well but is it that the UK is doing well or is it just that other countries are doing badly. Ah, it's, it's got very little to do with the UK economy. Um, actually, because it's most of these companies, as I said, a lot of the investments are actually overseas. But it's a, it's a good reflection. So that if